When one describes Escape from Tarkov, they might use words such as gritty, realistic, punishing, or immersive. And from a certain point of view, these descriptors would be correct, especially when you compare Escape from Tarkov to other major FPS titles. And by now I'm sure that most of you know this channel has an invested interest in the overall story and lore of Tarkov, but also in its immersive gameplay. So today I want to take a critical look at where Tarkov is now, and what my ideas are to make the game feel more immersive and realistic so both new and old players alike can really put themselves in the shoes of their PMC and become a part of this amazing digital world. First, I want to take a look at quests and tasks, and how they can be built up and improved upon in future releases. Other than lore documents that have been released here and there over the years, and of course the Raid live action series, the bulk of what we know about Tarkov comes from the dialogue presented by the various dealers when they give you a task. A good example of this is from one of the newest quests added to the game, Huntsman's Path Factory Chief, in which you are tasked with killing the new boss, Tagala. In the dialogue, Jaeger reveals that not only did Tagala work in the chemical factory, but so did his brother. Killa. And if you look over the previous quest dialogues from both Mechanic and Jaeger, both of these dealers also worked in the chemical factory before the events of the game. If this information surprises you, that's not surprising, because most Tarkov players see a quest, accept it, and race through the dialogue or don't read it at all, and immediately check what the requirements are to complete that task. And sure, part of it is due to the fact that some are in a hurry to progress through the game. But another is that when many people are greeted with a wall of text that has no immediate bearing on the task at hand, they tend to just gloss over it or skip it completely. Adding to this, the players complete tasks at different times, and at different rates. Sometimes the overall story can get disjointed or out of order. But I have two suggestions that might help players slow down in the future and listen to what dealers have to say, which is to have the dealer quest dialogue be voice acted. If a very short cutscene or simply voice acted dialogue is played after receiving a quest, I think a lot of players would actually listen to it and get a lot more out of it. Obviously, this comes with some challenges for BSG. There are a ton of quests in the game, and several different dealers which all require unique actors to voice them. And then of course, there would have to be considerations taken for languages, where either they would need this dialogue to be done and redone in many different languages, or just the most popular languages with subtitles for the rest. It wouldn't be an easy or cheap task, but it adds a layer of immersion to a game that simple text just can't beat. Take for example games like Divinity Original Sin which is an RPG game with a very rich story and massive amounts of lore. The game is fully voice acted, and is extremely dialogue heavy. Very few people would take the time to read plain text in a game like that, but almost everyone will sit and listen to the characters tell you a story when it's voice acted. It gives the game that extra level of polish that can really immerse you in whatever is going on. And of course, the more emotion put into the acting itself will only make the end product even better. You would have my gratitude and whatever aid I can then offer to you. Next up, we're looking at player and AI animations and behavior. Now, before I go too far into this, I know that what I'm about to suggest may have huge implications on Tarkov's already overly taxed netcode, so many, if not all of these changes may rely on improvements on the netcode first, but I digress. Tarkov's story, scenery, and gameplay can all be incredibly immersive, but I think almost everyone can agree that the animations and behavior of the AI can pull you right out of the feeling of being a lone survivor in a post-apocalyptic hellscape pretty dang quick. Let's break down each element one by one, starting with character models and their default stances. When you look over to your squad mate, or an AI scav that's not aggroed, you are seeing a combat stance that is known as high ready. This is when you are facing a potential threat, and while you are not looking down your sights, the rifle is raised so that your sights are just below your vision, and the stock is resting on your shoulder. This stance allows you to fire your weapon without aiming down sights if need be, or quickly look down your sights for a precise shot. This is also the default stance in many video games, especially arcade FPS style games, because your character looks like he is in the action, and it also gives you a great view of your gun in the first person perspective. The issue I see with Tarkov and this default stance is that it is not realistic, and just looks awkward. 
most of the time. Take scavs for example. These guys live day in and day out in this area, and when we see them, I'd like to think that they are just milling around, looking for supplies, or hanging out with their buddies, as long as there is no immediate threat in the area. I'd love to see two things. First, the default stance for all players should be a gun position called ported. This is when your rifle is held in your hands, but your arms hang down comfortably, with the muzzle of the rifle either pointed downwards or off to the side. This relaxes the arms, and allows you to carry a weapon comfortably, but also have it be ready to use very quickly if need be, and tells everyone around you that you are armed. From a gameplay standpoint, I think after a reasonable amount of time has elapsed after ADSing, you would then transition to the rifle ported stance. It could also speed up the recovery of your arm stamina while in the stance. Players would look far more natural and lifelike, as well as the AI, with some AI even choosing to sling their rifles in the front or the back at times, which leads me to my next suggestion. The game would look and feel so much more immersive if the AI had more natural default and at ease animations. Think of the game Stalker Shadow of Chernobyl. One of the most immersive elements of that game, aside from the combat and setting, was some of the neutral or even hostile characters that you could spy on during your travels. Bandits, loners, and other factions would band together in little groups or sit around burn barrels or campfires, carrying on conversations, laughing, arguing, and sometimes one would pull out a guitar or even sing a sad song. How amazing would it be to see scavs move in a natural manner while at rest, slowly walking around or picking through garbage, to then assemble in a small huddle around a burn barrel and start carrying on some conversation. If you pick one off or they become alerted to your presence, they could reach for their guns that were on slings or they would pull pistols from their waistband before seeking cover. This added level of polish would add ridiculous amounts of realism and immersion and probably create interesting opportunities and funny moments as well. And one thing's for sure, it would certainly be a thousand times better than the current pathing where scavs sprint back and forth endlessly. As a bonus, raiders and bosses could have unique animations and pathing, where they assemble into a squad and clear an area, with a few extra animations they don't currently have, such as tapping each other's shoulders, or making hand signals to one another, or even custom idle animations, like Killer raising his visor to wipe his brow, which could create a unique opportunity to anyone spying on him. Honestly, I could suggest all kinds of crazy things, but I think you guys get the idea. Now we're going to transition back to quests to finish this off. My final suggestion is something that Nikita has already hinted at, but I have no idea where BSG is at with this, which is narrative quests. These are tasks that are not given by any dealer, but think of it like a campaign or overall story, with dealer quests being the side jobs you perform. Tarkov has set the stage for some huge narrative elements. Terra Group has hired USEC to protect their interests. They've colluded with local government to procure real estate, laboratories, factories, and military equipment illegally. They're testing something on human subjects, and when the Russian government was about to find out about it, they decided that starting a small war was worth keeping their secrets. Bear was sent in, but everything went to hell, and now our PMC are abandoned, and trying to find out what is going on with Terror Group because that can be your ticket out of Tarkov. These narrative quests should look and feel completely different from the errands and odd jobs that we do for the dealers, and quite honestly, I can suggest all kinds of stuff, but I have no idea how BSG wants to approach this, and what is the limitations of the game. Would there be cutscenes? Would some of it take place offline? Maybe there are multiple endings, or different endings for Bear or Yusek. Perhaps you find information, or an item that can spill the beans on whatever terror group is up to, and you need to make a choice with what you'll do with it, and each choice can affect the end game or late game gameplay. This could vary wildly, and it could be anything from the same types of missions we have now, to some really highly polished AAA looking cinematic gameplay. But until we see what they have planned, we can only speculate at this point. All I really want is for them to do the story of Tarkov justice. They've spent years and years building this lore and crafting these environments. I hope that whatever we get to unravel the story of Tarkov is just how they envisioned it at the start, and they make no concessions. And this dovetails perfectly into what I want to hear from you guys. What do you think about these suggestions? Do you think these ideas would enhance the game and make it more immersive for all? Or do you think it would just bog down development for more pressing issues? Do you have any suggestions for how the future of Tarkov would look and feel? If so, put it in the comments. I want to see what you guys think. I'd love to do more of these types of videos, where you and I can pick apart the various elements of this game that we love and provide feedback. If you like this kind of video, be sure to leave a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, or a thumbs down if you didn't. I can't wait to show you some of the stuff we're working on, but until then, I'm Jeff with UL Gaming. Good luck out there.